y'all tripping with me like Christians ain't sexy. Let me ask y'all something. If Christians ain't sexy, where all these little Christians keep coming from? No matter what you're going through, he says all you have to do is tell me yes. Greetings, G. Craig Lewis here, in case you didn't know, and we're here <laughs> doing the exposition show. Uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you for logging on and checking us out. Uh, we, we really enjoy doing this. We, do. we have a good time doing it, but <clears throat> most importantly, we enjoy the help that is being shared through this uh, for so many of you. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all of your kind words. Uh, we are all the way up to episode nine. Can y'all believe it? Yeah, it episode by. nine went by real fast. And so I'm here with Jay Bryan, Carmina Barnett, and today we're going to be talking about sexy Christians. <laughs> That's a real title. Okay, Carmina, let's go. Sexy Christians, uh-huh. Well, let's do this. Let's first divine, define holiness. Let's start there. Okay. Well, well God is holy, yes. right? Yes. Um, which, which simply means that there's no sin in God whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we were created like him, right? Mm -hmm. But we fell in the garden. So now our lives should consist of us trying to get back to the state before the fall. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Before the fall, we were, we, we were not sinners. So that, that's, the, that's the concept, or that is the meaning or the definition of what holy or holiness would be. If we look at Matthew 5 and 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Holiness. Mm -hmm. It's really not that hard. I mean, if you, if you read the Bible, right? Right. It's not that hard. Uh, God's ex expectation for our, our way of living is, is not hard. It's all right. written in the Word. Um, and Jesus came to bring God's holiness back into our lives so we can live justified by him. The law couldn't do this. So because Christ came, he paid the penalty for sin. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. We may sin now and we all have sin. We've all fallen short. We all do things that we shouldn't do at some point. So we may sin now, but we shouldn't practice sin. Right. So that means we should, you know, that's why we're here. And that's why we're giving this word. And that's why you guys come to the church. And that's why. We're trying to condition ourselves to where we can live better by not sinning. Right. It's not just about living the best life and I'm living my best life. Did I sing it? You did. It's not about us just living our best <laughs> life. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> what is your best life? Your best life is still sin. Yes, it is. Filthy right? right? So right. it's about us living our life according to the way God lays our life out. Uh, we may sin now, but we shouldn't practice this as a lifestyle if we are going to live in God's holiness. First, John 5 and 16 explains it, and it says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not or does not practice sin, but he that is begotten or born of God keepeth 
himself. So that should be all of our goal to keep, keep ourselves. ourselves. Keep mm -hmm. ourselves from what? From sin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? And that the wicked one touches him not. Right. So we know many of us have been touched by the wicked one. Why? Because we didn't keep ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if you keep yourself, the Bible says the wicked one touches him not. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of uh, explaining what holiness really looks like. Right. Okay. Well, talking about holiness, is holiness a denomination? Now, you know, some folks like a Baptist service and some <laughs> folks like a... Holiness service. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's let's be clear, okay. and we all have to be holy, mm -hmm. right? So it shouldn't matter about your church musical style or if the organist is backing up the preacher, because <laughs> that's all it is. That's the yeah. only difference. That's how you that's how you <laughs> differentiate the difference between different denominations and uh, what they accept and what they don't. Uh, we still have to live that holy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, you know, well, it, we have to do that in order for God. You know, we, have, we have to live the holy lifestyle for God when you, leave, when you leave there. So in other words, you can go to a church based in denomination and you can, you can go where the praise and worship team is doing whatever, whatever, or the musicians are doing whatever, or you got a praise break and all of that is great. But what about when you leave that particular meeting? Mm -hmm. So when you leave there, when you leave that church building, you still have to live that same holiness, right? So James right. 1 and 22 says, but ye be doers of the word. Right. And not just hearers only deceiving your own self. So you, you sit amongst the word, you hear all this preaching about holiness, this, that and the fourth. And you feel that in that moment. But then as soon as you leave, everything that you just experienced or everything you just did inside of that building because of the emotion or the or the backing of the music, you change. That's not the definition. It's the opposite of holiness. Mm -hmm. And Baptist holiness, Church of God in Christ, Methodist. Episcopalian, Lutheran, <laughs> all of them got the same Bible, right? Mm -hmm. And so that same Bible says we all got to be holy, right? We all got to be so holy. So we got to believe the whole Bible. We can't join a denomination because they exclude certain things. Right. Some folks don't like to go to church where they deal with devils. Yeah. Well, then you don't want to go to a church where you're dealing with people. Because people have devils. 100%. You know what I'm saying? That, that makes no sense. So yeah. they don't want to go to a church. Now, I understand if it's a church where it's, you know, a thriller video every Sunday <laughs> and grizzly grooms from every tomb are closing in. I mean, I understand that. Vincent Price is preaching. Right. right. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I understand that. You know, it's somebody that's just riling up demons and don't know what to do and they <laughs> getting chased. So I understand that, uh, but you you know you don't want to exclude <laughs> casting out devils, or you know, and especially a church that's teaching against sin. Right. How are you gonna run try to? Oh, I can't come back to this church because they're teaching against sin. Right, I right. mean, that, you're not saved. One. I mean, you're just not <laughs> saved. Like I mean, you sit in the church and then the pastor start talking about sin. Oh, oh well, it's my last. Right, I mean, right. what, so you're going to go to a church just because right. they don't preach against sin. Right. You know, something's wrong with you, okay? Because there's, there may be many denominations, but there is only one faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. One faith. So the faith is in the word, is what the word says. We all got to believe what the word says. Yes. Ephesians 4 and 5, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Right. Yes. So in talking about holiness now, is this a way of behaving? Is that what holiness is? Yeah, precisely. That's, okay. that's exactly what it is. Holiness is a lifestyle of living free from sin. Right? right? So mm -hmm. forgiveness, but, but also forgiveness for others mm -hmm. and following God's plan for your life. So all of that is consistent of holiness. Hebrews mm -hmm. 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness. So that follow peace with all men, which means you have to forgive in order mm -hmm. to have that peace with that man. We mm -hmm. were just having a conversation mm -hmm. about that. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So all of this runs in together. You can't have one portion without the other. Yeah. So you can't have one person feeling a way about a person or you can't be known for holding grudges for, for somebody, but then also not at the same time as being the person who's upholding the, the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. It's an oxymoron. It completely goes against it, itself. So yes, mm -hmm. holiness but think about this. is a lifestyle. If we do a survey right now, most people are going to attribute holiness to the way we dress. Yeah. And how mm -hmm. we appear. Yeah. So can what we wear, can that make us more holy? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me straighten this out. This, okay. is, this is misunderstood by so many people because, yeah. you know, and I understand the older church wanted to set a standard so that the church could not look like the world. Right. But right. because we are in America, 
our situation is different from the situation of Israel. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so the law, when it was given to Israel, was pertaining to pagans who dressed a certain way to show their gods. Right. They did things to their body. They augmented themselves. They yeah. cut themselves. They mm -hmm. burned themselves. They would do things to show the workings of false gods. Right. And so Jesus, uh, our God, put the law in place so that his people would not partake in the things that uplifted false gods. Right. So some of these things that we try to take out of the word, uh, i.e. Deuteronomy 22, doesn't really translate well in our society, not to take away from the fact that we need to look decent and modest or, or you know, we don't need to be, you know, loosey, floozy, right. all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you don't want to take Deuteronomy 22 and try to misuse it. Um, this is misunderstood. Holiness is not a way we dress. Our outer appearance is reflective of what's going on inside. on the inside. OK, mm -hmm. so. When you see someone expressing themselves outwardly, they're expressing what's going on on the inside. So yep. if hoochie is in their heart, <laughs> hoochie's gonna be the that's gonna be the section that they're shopping in at the store. They're gonna the be hoochie in the section. three sizes too small section. Yeah, and they're gonna be wearing leggings with no big shirt. Is that a new thing? It unfortunately. That's a tragic. That's a tragedy. Unfortunately. And so, but they, they want to show themselves like that. They, you know, they just want everyone to see. And so our out appearance is always reflective. So you can't change a person's appearance if their heart doesn't change. And this right. is what a lot of people try to do. Right. You know, I used to always say they try to scale a fish before they catch it. Mm. So they, they bring the young folks in there and try to make them think that a certain way they're dressing is sinful without really dealing with the sinfulness that's within them, right? you know, and why they need that kind of attention and all those kind of things. Luke mm -hmm. 11 and 39 says it like this. And the Lord said unto him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. So you know, that's like slapping whiskey out of a wino's hand. Drop that whiskey, stop right. that drinking in Jesus name. Okay, and as soon as you walk away, Right. <laughs> I had to do the whole illustration. Yeah, you had to do it. I thing. started it, so I had to finish it. <laughs> but that's that, that's what I'm saying. That's that's kind of where you know it's kind of the same principle. Right. You, you you know you need to deal with what's making him drink. You need to deal with why he's drinking. What happened in his past? What's going on? And the same thing with the, uh, you know the way we dress. Yeah. We, you know we that's why here you know we don't. Certain things we'll discuss with you because we just kind of want to know what's going on. Why do you feel you need, you know, need to look like that yeah. uh, when you come, you know, with the people of God? Yeah, I mean, but decency is enfor enforced. Right. Right. Because, you know, people can get that misconstrued. Mm -hmm. you know, I think the message of EX for a very long time has been decency. And 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 we're going to talk about the man later. <laughs> You'll be stopped doing this. But, <laughs> but the, the sagging of pants, like, I don't want somebody to say, well, I mean, you... Pastor G talk about sagging pants. Well, well, that's that's indecent. Yeah. So that's not the same thing, right? You know, I'm just yeah. I'm just no, saying no, no, to bring clarity true. to that. Yeah, that's yeah. that that will just get your your salary lowered on your job. Yeah. <laughs> like your hourly rate gets lowered as soon as you walk in with your butt shot. Right, right. I mean, that's so that's that's <laughs> just global indecency. That's right. prison attire. So that's something when you walk in, you see, we gonna tell you pull your pants up, bro. Amen. You know, brothers walking in with earrings, take your earrings off, right? You don't see nobody else in here wearing earrings. Right. That means you need to take yours off. So those are the things, those are non-negotiable. Right. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not dealing with that. Right. But as far as someone who may not know how to dress, or I always say, somebody, that might be all they have. Right. Well, then the church needs to have a room with clothes in it. Amen. Like the old church had, had, had swaddles. Swaddling sheets and they'd wrap you up like a mummy and sit you on the front row. So, you know, we, <laughs> we need to be prepared because we don't, you know, we don't know. Right. And I don't like to judge people. For <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you eat his cake. <laughs> but just cover yourself. And so we need to be prepared for that because we don't know the situation. So like you're saying, that's balance. And I'm glad you said that. Mm. Some things are just indecent and right. they're indecent by the world standard. Amen. Well, one of the biggest questions for years, and I've seen this even growing up in my own life, <clears throat> has been about women wearing pants. Now, there is mention in the Bible of this, but is it what we have made it out to be? Now, did you used to have to sneak pants to school in a backpack? Of course. <laughs> of course. 
Yes. I mean, that was like the thing. My, wow. my, my sister would get off the bus and I mean, she would be changing clothes like, like Superwoman. Wow. That was a rite of passage. You had to sneak a pair. You had to? Yeah. Wow. I, I, I think the, the issue with women wearing pants actually came from feminism, right? Mm -hmm. And, and what wearing the pants in the family actually represented. Mm -hmm. And it just got misconstrued and misapplied by the church. Mm -hmm. So in our early American culture, women wore dresses to signify that, you know, she was in a submissive posture. And mm -hmm. I could just hear all the women uh, submissive. Anyway, uh, but it was symbolic of being in a submissive role. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what the idea came from. Now, has it become extreme and in, in, in some ways abusive? Of, of course it has. Like and everything that, else. Right. I mean, every, everything has, but, I, you know, pastor bring more clarity to it as far as that whole, that whole picture. But that's what it comes from. Mm -hmm. Wearing the pants in the house typically applies to the man. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and it, it does in my house. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it does uh, kind of like spiritually or understood yeah. who's wearing the pants. Right. Deuteronomy states that a woman should not wear anything pertaining to a man. Okay, that's Deuteronomy right. 22. That's right. where they get it from. Mm -hmm. So because me pants are pertaining to a man, well, you know, there were no pants when this was written. Right. Okay, so there was no <laughs> coals behind the big rock over by Mount Heber. Right. Everybody was wearing okay. pants. You, you couldn't go shopping by, <laughs> you couldn't buy no capris uh, past the two rocks on around the corner on the, on the way to Galilee. Right. You can stop by the quick and quick. Quick save <laughs> and get you a pair of gotchos. Right. Did I say gotchos? You did. 50 years old. Yeah. But there are no pants. There were no pants then, so this is not gonna translate in our time very well. Okay? Right. right. And I want people to know, you know, I'm 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 a humorous guy. Okay, so I just believe a little bit of laughter sometimes help the medicine, whatever. But that's my personality. I've been like this since day one, the first video. I've had people write in and say, oh, you sitting on that white. Mount Olympus like you Zeus oh and you God. just mocking us and laughing at us and all this. No, I'm, I, I always do this. You haven't seen no videos. I've been doing this since day one. I did it when I was fat. Relax. I did it when I was skinny. Yeah. I did it when I'm medium like I am now. Whatever it is. This is my personality. I'm just like this, okay? You, yeah. And so uh, this isn't any kind of arrogance or anything and I'm not poking fun at the old church right. or what, you know, for what they taught us because I hold what I learned in high regard. Right. But inconsistency in the word I'm going to deal with because that's why our young people are in the state they're in now and have left the church because yeah. of these inconsistencies. And the church ought to love me. They ought to love me because I'm your advocate. Yeah. I'm fighting for the church. Right. You know what? I'm fighting for the church because those are my orders from God. But I could stop. Yeah. And I could draw everyone to, to, to me and tell them don't go to churches no more. Right. I could do that. But yeah. I, I'm following God's orders to try to help his church continue. Because this is what he wants. Amen. And so, right. you know, you ought to, you, really, I'm on your side. Right. right, but I'm going. <laughs> this Deuteronomy, y'all got this wrong, and here we go. <laughs> women have pants in the women's section of the store. They do. So they have women pants and men pants. They right? Do. They do. Right. Carmen was at a church not too long ago, and the, they had women pants even on the men. They did. But there are women pants and men pants, right? Mm -hmm. So the crazy thing <laughs> is, and this is just the crazy part to me. I know holiness churches where women are pastors mm -hmm. of a holiness church. Preachers in there preaching to the men. Talk about it. Correcting the men, <laughs> even though that's not biblical. And the women are taught careers and financial status over homemaking and child rearing. And yet they wear dresses only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is absurd. This is absurd. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 actually says, the women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Why they don't teach that part? Right. Just a couple of men with some Sunday best hats on. Uh, I mean, flower, floral patterns, some of these patterns you can't do. Yeah, talk about you it. Can't, you can't match every bush you see. <laughs> 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 Neither, Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all they do, so are abomination unto the Lord. So God is setting the record straight here, basically saying, don't 
you know, don't uh, lose your identity because I made you separate. And I, you know, I want your identity gives me glory. Yeah. So you have to keep your identity right. and be identifiable as male and female. Right. Amen. Right. So for clarity, <clears throat> I'm trying to make it in. For clarity, <laughs> a woman can wear pants. And still be submissive to her husband and in good standing with God. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So be because this whole issue, um, it was a heart or an intent issue and not a physical appearance issue. That's, that's what Pastor just got finished breaking down so um, precisely. It, it's 100% the heart. It has nothing to do with you wearing some pants. You understand what I'm saying? If Proverbs 4 and 23 says it like this, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. We also just said that a lot mm -hmm. of what you do on the out, um, outside is reflective of what's going on the inside. So even if we pay attention to the young people, as soon as hip hop does it, all the young people do it. Mm -hmm. So that's indicative of what? Either a missing father in the home, mm -hmm. right? Or a overbearing mother in terms of being over emotional with the young man or not understanding how to balance him because there is no man in the home. The hair is colored. I mean, it's all types of crazy stuff going on with these, with these kids. And back to what you experienced the other day. Young men are 100% okay with wearing women's jeans. Huh? Like, it's like they get up, they get dressed, they call their other male friends, they go to the mall, and they specifically go to the women's section of the store and purchase women's jeans. And this comes from a rapper. There's a rapper by the name of Young Thug that started promoting this about two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. They wear women jeans. So uh, again, these are the issues flowing out of, out of their lives and out of their heart. Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah, and the church has to pay attention to the issues. Yeah. So, you know, not the outside. Right. I mean, they get caught up in the outside, but don't deal with the internal. And God doesn't have a problem with a woman wearing pants at all. Okay, so I'll say that to you on the video. God doesn't have a, I mean, some folks watching me, they, they don't even have pants in their culture. Okay, so, God is not American. Talk about it. You know, America's not in the Bible. I don't right. know why folks like to try to put it there. We're just not a part of that, okay? This is not who he was talking to. Um, <clears throat> he, has a, he, he doesn't have a problem with, a, with women wearing pants, but God has a problem with a woman wearing the pants in the family. Talk now, about now, it. If we're going to talk about this, let's, talk let's go on and talk about it. Okay. To be in good standing with God, you have to be in your creation role. Mm -hmm. you know, meaning you have to be functioning the way he created you to function. After all, he is the manufacturer. Yeah. So his plan is the only plan that pleases him. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, but I would have you know that the head of every man is who? Christ. Christ. And the head of the woman is the what? The man. The man. And the head of Christ is God. God. So you can't, you know, you can't uh, wear the <clears throat> pants in the family. Right. And that's not physical. That means you control in the house. Okay. You just is out of order. So, you know, a skirt or dress ain't going to, you ain't going to make it in. You still got on pants right. if you run in the house. Right. Right. But the Proverbs 31 woman now, let's talk about it. She was taking care of the home. She was making the money. She was watching the kids, all of that. So what's wrong with a woman wearing the pants? Is that really wrong? <laughs> yeah. See, you know, and, that, and people like to use this scripture. They, I mean, women like to use this to justify controlling men and being over men and men working for them. And they, you know, they, you know, how the sorority women and they yep. always large and in charge and they always yep. marry some man they can emasculate and have him over there quiet while they taking care of everything. That is not the Proverbs 31 woman. The Proverbs 31 woman was not doing those things to impress others or have excess of things. Right. right there, you disqualify because you're trying to impress others. Mm -hmm. You're trying to overcome a deficit in, within yourself, yeah. and you're trying to have an excess of things. You're disqualified. You're not Proverbs 31. You're Proverbs 18. You're somewhere down. The, you know, you, you, you're not there. <laughs> she worked from home and took care of her husband's affairs for him. We know that, right? right. I, I, I love when my wife does that. She purchased the field to grow food for her family, and she sold tapestry not to show off or heap upon themselves material luxury. So this wasn't about them trying to stunt. Right, right. This woman was, <clears throat> she bought a field so she could grow the food for her family. She wasn't buying a field so that she could build a skyscraper on it and hire a bunch of employees. Right, right. I mean, people just, ooh, will you leave the Bible, the Bible, please? 
She didn't do anything to neglect her husband or children's needs or jeopardize their safety. So she wasn't dropping the kids off at Big Mama's house right. with the crazy uncle in the back room ready to come out and molest somebody. She wasn't doing that. She wasn't dropping them off at a daycare with total strangers you don't know and anything can happen. Y'all need to get a grip on this for real. You're responsible for those children. Why you got children that you don't want to be responsible for? She didn't do anything to, ne uh, to neglect this. And the Bible says that the man is the provider of the home. Yep. Why don't you read that part? Right. First Timothy 5 and 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of whose own house? His oh. own. He, his house. His. N no her, no she is used in this passage. <laughs> But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, infidel. or a sinner. That's scripture. So y'all just come off of this. Quit trying to, ugh, folk get on my nerves with this because they, they're, they're looking for a loophole to justify something. Right, right. And the word is 100% clear. Well, we're going to take a real quick break, but we're going to come back and talk more about sexy Christians. Keep it here as the exposition. I mean, these demons and these songs and these folks are trying to take you somewhere. Did Jesus preach about hell? Jesus spoke of hell way more than he spoke of heaven. Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So who goes to hell? Let's see what they were doing that made the earth open up. The Bible said their thoughts were evil, what? Continuously. The first thing they did was they rebelled against God while claiming to be God's chosen people. And then they created their own gods. They went back to their old sins. Finally, they rejected God's prophet and his. So for us to do what we want to do with you, we need you to be able to learn evil. That's what this was all about. And so the devil can promote his family. Not God's family. The devil's family. These rappers and stuff, they, they rap about it. They sing about it they want to take your children there they want to take you there you go to some churches and the folk looking all nasty and and and, and the kids the girls dressed all sexy in the church so what you sexy for in church just sexy just you in church sexy who you sexy for? They come and pray, and you know, we was at one church. They gathered all around the altar, and they come in and just bending over and thongs and G-strings. I sitting there showing the tattoos and got the, the boyfriend they broke up with four years ago name, and they just, and then there's a, 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 they had like 50 tiles on the side, 50 sheets. Brother, and they, they, they taking them and covering all the girls. I'm like, 50 sheets? Then they ran out of sheets. My wife took her coat off. And just, I said, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. 50 sheets? Somebody need to teach holiness in here. What you coming in here looking like that for? So we're back, and we're talking more about sexy Christians. So my next question is... <laughs> the title just gets that's, that's the name. It's, just, it's, it's such an oxymoron. Well, what about the Christians that are wearing the revealing items and trying to be sexy? Now, is that really okay for a believer? <laughs> I, I mean, what? <laughs> I got to ask. Uh, the real question is why? why? Why do you want to be sexy in church? Why are you a sexy Christian? 
Well, you know, I'm single. Uh, oh, my God. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying She's what the answer would be. Yeah, oh, that's okay. what the answer right. would be. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? All right. So the, 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 really, the, the, the question is why? Why, why? why are you sexy in church? Okay. Why are you drawing looks and attention away from the reason people are there? Mm -hmm. People are not there to see you, what you got on, your curves, mm -hmm. or whatever is going on with, with your physical appearance. Um, at that point, you know, what you're doing is you're allowing the devil to use you to take attention away from and to focus off worship. You're you're presenting yourself as an idol for somebody in that moment, which mm. which is gonna you know that's that God takes real issue with people who pull other people away from Him mm -hmm. um, in place of Him, and and we need to be very very careful of that. Yeah, and being alluring and captivating to draw looks from people is sinful. Mm. But let's get something straight. There's nothing wrong with looking good. Right. Okay. So let's let just know there's a balance. There's nothing wrong with looking good, right? you know, looking the best you can look, looking nice, smelling nice, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, fix yourself up and look your best. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. We come to church, you know, we don't dress up uh, really here at ABC, we don't wear suits and different things like that, but I mean, we if do. You, if you want to. Well, if you want to, I'm yeah. saying as a, you know, like, that's a requirement. A mandate. A mandate. There You're you not going to turn your way to the door. You don't got a double yeah. breast suit on. Yeah. Go get back in the car. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's nothing like that. But we do look nice. Everybody kind of, sometimes they'll wear a suit. Sometimes they'll just, you know, dress down like we're dressed right now, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, your shirt is ironed. Right. You know, and you just look proper because that's proper, right? We just want to look nice. Yeah. So fix yourself up. But single men and single women should always look their best. Right. Like if you're trying to catch, which I don't mean you're trying to catch, like you're trying to allure somebody. Right. But you want to be caught if you, or you want to be found if you are a single woman. Right. Amen. So you need to look your best. You need to, you can't be smelling like a Whataburger and expect to be found. <laughs> you're going to be found by a chef. You need to be found, you need to look your best, and you need to bathe, right? You need to bathe, clean yourself up, get your hair nice. And I'm not talking about you have to go and get something done. <laughs> why, why are you looking at me from around the cup? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that's, that's a real thing. That's a lot of People, onions and water burger. You be, you, that's a real thing. Yeah. They smell like a burger and they ain't had no burger. <laughs> yeah, that's a real thing. You need to bathe, you need to clean yourself up, you need to comb your hair, yeah. look nice, you know, do, do this, you know, get the crust and, and the, you know, yeah. all of that. Look nice when you're talking to people, whatever, because you want to be found. I don't understand how people just let themselves go and then go, well, why don't nobody, won't nobody <laughs> approach me? You know, that, that's ridiculous. Won't you just get yourself together and look nice? Yeah, amen. Not that it's all about looks, but men are visual. Yeah. So as a woman, you need to be trying to look good uh, if that's what you expect. And men the same way. Yeah. Like, you don't, don't be trying to go, just, well, the women, all the women desperate so I can look however I want. Just wake yeah. up and grab your shirt off the floor and, and, and you know, yeah. don't run a comb through your head or whatever. And I, I see parts and you don't have no parts. I testify for all the women. That don't work. <laughs> that don't work. I, I mean, you need to look nice and <laughs> yes. look like you, you know, are glad to... <laughs> Glad to be living. Absolutely. Can, can you look like you're glad to be living? Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and wives should look like their husbands <clears throat> desire them to look, and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. you know, don't, don't get married looking like a beauty queen, and then the day after, you done pulled off everything. You done right. pulled the hair off, pulled the eyes off, pulled the... Just, you wow. just, I mean, everything. You ain't even the same person. Don't mm. do that. Ask him, you know, how would you like me to look, right. you know, and, and, and or do, does this look good to you or whatever? And you really dress for your husband. That's what we don't, you know, we don't instruct married women how they should look. I mean, that's, that's up to your husband. Right. And we don't instruct, the, you know, and vice versa, the other way around. There's mm -hmm. nothing at all wrong with being goodly. Yes. Goodly. Like the Bible said. That's like a Bible word. word. Goodly. goodly. The like Bible that. used goodly to mean somebody looked good. Like, <laughs> like the old folks said, looked at it good. <laughs> looked at it. But, but that's the way the Bible, that's what uh, the Bible calls it. Ruth 3 and 3. And this is Naomi t uh, telling Ruth to prepare uh, because, I mean, you about to get a man. You need to look good for the man. Amen. Wash thyself, therefore. Did you hear me say wash? Wash. Wash thyself. That's, wash. That, that's, that ain't no baptism. That's a bath. <laughs> 
Okay, so wash yourself, clean yourself, and then anoint thee and put thy raiment up on thee. Meaning, get, get, put some clothes on. Yes. Look like you got something. Don't try to sneak to the store and think ain't nobody going to see you. Your husband might be on the way yeah. to the store. Yeah. Yo, you might have a flat tire, mm -hmm. and you got to get out in that gown with them hair rods in. Yeah. You know, don't, don't do that. And get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man until he's finished eating. So that's scripture. So God, it would, this wouldn't be in the Bible and the word goodly wouldn't be in the Bible if there wasn't, you know, uh, a way to look better or something that we could do to look better. Right? Did you say hair rods? Hair rods. Yeah, I'm hair 50. rods. I, I, I'm yeah, 50. So I remember rods. the rods and the kit. Remember the kit? You used to buy a kit <laughs> and you put the stuff in your hair, but you put the rods in there and yeah. it would make the curls. That was the Jerry curl, right? Another question. <laughs> we going on. <laughs> Another big question is. I don't know. <laughs> you ain't that young, <laughs> Right. He's like, ah. he's like eight. He don't know. I, Another big <laughs> question is women wearing makeup. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Now, am I less godly if I choose to line my lips? Does uh, that take it, it away? It just depends on how much you wear. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, if you're trying to cover cigarette smoking. I mean, if you got to take off five faces before I understand who you really are. <laughs> but but seriously, making yourself look nice is not a sin. But this is for women and men. Mm -hmm. I like to look nice as well. I mean, sometimes the tightest fade you know, in in the Metroplex. Yes. Uh, Bring that camera in on this fade. Please, yes. don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, no, see, it, it's not a sin. Jezebel did it to mock Jehu from the window. It, you know, a lot of times churches reference this, or women will reference this. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where the issue with the church women come from. If you look at 2 Kings 9 and 30, it says, And when Jehu was, uh, was come to uh, Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face mm. and tired her head and looked out of a window. Mm. So because she was choosing to mock somebody, they, they try to paint this negative connotation to makeup. And it's not. It's just, you know, for those, of, again, like Pastor said, if you're married, what's your husband like? If you're not married, you know, don't make the guy take off the five faces first, you know? <laughs> Let's, let's start with one coat. <laughs> but, you know, and then, then that same passage, it's something about that word painted. That, right. That just, 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 just really ticked off an old saint because they begin to use paint. You know, that, that's that the paint, paint on your face. I had one preacher come and preach and say, see, God don't have a problem with foundation and rush. He said rush. <laughs> he said, it's these paints that's a sin. The paint is the sin paint. because Jezebel painted herself. Well, that word just translated as she made herself up as a queen would. Right. She put on her queen attire so Jehu would come and see this is the queen. Right. And she wanted to taunt him as the queen. That's the only reason. Folks don't, I mean, they won't even let you put on makeup and look out the window. <laughs> you gotta get out that window, get out that window, girl. Hilarious. But, she, but Paul taught a woman should exhibit modesty, okay? Yeah. So let's talk about this. This is yeah. the other side of the spectrum, which mm -hmm. is modesty, mm -hmm. meaning don't just look good on the outside, but make sure the inside looks just as good. Right. Okay, because if the inside is right, then it'll take care of the outside. Modesty is it has a lot to do with motive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're dressing modest, then that kind of checks your motive. You know, if, if it's the other way around where you're immodest or you're not modest, then what is your motive? Right. Are you trying to be suggestive? Are you trying to lure people in? Are you trying to get more views and more likes right. by overexposing yourself? That's not modest, okay? Paul talked that women should be modest, but make sure the inside is clean. When the inside is right, the outside will take care of itself in most cases. Now, I will say, because we have so many folks dropped off at Big Mama's house, left off to the wayside and mama's out doing her thing, trying to find herself, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then these younger girls, <clears throat> like I talked about last week, mm -hmm. they don't know how to look. And yeah. they are just following trends and following social the media. Biggest boy. And yeah. yeah, and that's why Christians that go online and try to talk about makeup and looking, they have to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Like you, yeah. you really have an audience here that may not have been exposed to a foundation right. and they are really seeking how to do this, right. you know? And so this is why the women in the church should step in and help these younger women with this. Uh, First Timothy two and nine is where Paul talks about this. He said in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, 
not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Right. So what he's saying is, don't just look this way, look good. On, don't adorn yourself on the outside. Right. Adorn yourself on the inside. Right. That will help you temper yourself as you are you know, making yourself up, watching yourself, whatever you're doing to look good, you'll temper it because you are, you know, you have the good works on the inside. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. So once I really get Christ down on the inside, I don't want to look like that, right? Is that what you're saying? That, that's exactly what I'm okay. saying because you, there's no need to look like that. Right? When you have Christ on the inside, a woman's, uh, you know, a woman that wants to be married, you know, for example, can rely on him to lead her. Right. and put her in the right place right. and the man will find her right. god knows right. where you are women single woman god knows where you are Amen. and the same with a man once he relies on christ and really gives himself over to christ he can trust that god is going to put him in the right place to pick the right woman that he needs to be with right. that's why you do this so you don't want to do it yourself he ain't trying to lure nobody. I'm going to put all this honey on me so the bees just buzzing around me all at church. You know, you don't want to <laughs> you don't do that potpourri all in your pockets. and not, Dude, you know. That's crazy. You, you, you know, you're not going to attract the right thing that way. You want to trust God with this so that God can find what you need for you. Exactly. Man. Exactly. So we're talking about holy dress and it seems. And I have to bring this out. It seems kind of one sided, though. You hear a lot of questions and rules and regulations for women. Mm -hmm. But is there anything towards the men? Yeah, I mean, we, we have to be careful with this as well. OK, a absolutely. Do, do women have eyes? Yeah. OK, then. So men should never dress to tempt women or to get accolades or praise. OK, okay? Um, all of the, modesty is on, on our end as well. We, sh we should wear the things that we like um, and then cover the things that people shouldn't see. Mm hmm. So um, unfortunately, especially in this present day, you know, men wear a lot of revealing things because the, the, for some reason Tight. this this Tight. fashion trend won't go away <laughs> with the women clothes. I, I, the, the men prefer leggings now. They look like jeans, but they prefer it to be tighter on them for some reason. And, and, and again, we have to be we got to be careful about that. So if, if we look at Galatians six and three, it says for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing then he deceives himself. So you obviously gotta feel, you gotta like that before you to, before for you to walk out the house. And then here's the thing: if, if you wear tight pants, why are they sagging? <laughs> That's an oxymoron. That's that don't make any reason. sense. The, the, you, you can't fit the pants, and then you still try to pass it off as a as a fashion statement. You can't fit the t -shirt, you can't fit the t shirt either. So you just just draws out. I mean. You do know guys are out here too. So that makes me scratch my head too. Who are you really trying to roll over? Anyway, so we, 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 in all, men have to be, you know, we have to be careful mm -hmm. with that as well. Yeah. And it's funny to me, you know, how some, some holiness movements, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the women are all dried up and, and crusty. <laughs> I mean, just dried up and I mean, comb yeah. they had and a dust storm happened. Yeah. <laughs> just 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 dried up. But the men in that same church, yeah, I mean, got all the jewelry, got nugget bracelets. Talk about it. Yeah. N they went and found some nugget oh, bracelets. Okay. Nugget bracelets, mm. nugget rings on every finger. I mean, <laughs> looking like Fred's. <laughs> 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 Got jewelry. They got the tight pants. Yep. You know why they wear the tight pants. Mm -hmm. Short suit. Why is your... <laughs> why is your... That's a T-suit. <laughs> why, why is your suit above your behind so we can see your butt? Weird. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. It's I, weird. I don't, that, that trend right there. And then they want to turn around and direct the choir. Right. You want to turn around and direct the choir... With a Billy the Kid suit coat on. <laughs> Why are you wearing a little tight? <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> uh, suit short. <clears throat> then they dye their hair. It's crazy. Men, you talking about men. I'm talking about men. Tap gators. I mean, we hear you clocking. We, we know you in the church building. That's crazy. You walking down the hall. Oh, something like that. I just heard. Right. Because you got all your shoes tapped so you can be heard. Full length. Don't let it get cold. Don't let it get 75 degrees. They're going to show up in a full length mink coat. 
like they wanted the Dallas Cowboys at the Super Bowl party. <laughs> I call this the peacock syndrome because the women are sitting there. I mean, if you throw water on them, it'll evaporate. The, but the men got the full, I mean, they just on full 100. I don't understand that. Why are you flossing and glossing, but the women got to look ashy to Wait. please God? Wait. Why do you? What? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I've been in these situations. <clears throat> the water evaporating. That, that was good. I mean, but that that's, was... that, that's how it looks to me. Yeah. I mean, this is just my perspective. You, yeah. It's not fair that you punish the women right. and then you got all of this activity in the men. Yeah. And what does that draw? You got a church full of homosexuals. You yeah. have a church full of effeminate full of men. Full yep. of them. They don't want to look at the women. Yeah. So you got a church. That's what you're attracting. Everybody's effeminate and everybody because the men are the ones prancing around and primping yep. while the women are on punishment constantly. They can't, you know, they, they can't look nice yeah, talk or about it's it. a sin. Yeah. Well, I've seen situations where the younger generations feels like the older women are jealous of them. And that's why they put these restrictions on them and they can't wear certain things. Is, is that the case? Uh, it, yeah, th that can be the case sometimes. But. I also believe it's something that pastor teaches, um, which is the bar has to remain high. Mm -hmm. no, no matter where the bar is, is set, people are going to always fall, fall short of it. So we got to set it high. You, you understand standard. what I'm saying? That's, that's you, you, you have to. So yeah. it, first, first uh, Thessalonians uh, 4 and 7, it says, for God, I'm sorry, First Timothy 4 and 7 says, for God have not called that's us. Thessalonians. Is it, is it? Yes, it is. Sorry. Thank you. For God have not called us unto uncleanness. And I said it when we went over, and I don't know why I switched it right now. First Thessalonians 4 and 7. For God have not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So if, if holiness is the standard, who gave anybody permission to lower that standard for the sake of being, I guess, seeker friendly or people friendly or mm. to give to make your audience or the audience that you want? more comfortable with the standard of holiness. No, nobody, God never per, gave us permission to do that. So you have to set the, the standard really high mm -hmm. and start when they're young. So mm -hmm. it's, the Bible says, if we train them all right, when they grow old, they won't depart. So start them young. So when they get of age, it's automatic. You know, coming, slight, slight story or just observation coming from the city, I'm from Detroit. Um, and I'm making a huge difference because I've seen modesty in the city as well, but just being, um, in the Southern culture, a lot of the young ladies still have some of that old school application. Mm -hmm. Even the way they carry themselves, or even when they're, they're in malls or out and about with their moms, the way they position themselves, it's just in a posture of modesty. And I believe that's something that, that's, that needs to spread again all across the world again. You know what I mean? So well, and then that, but that has to be taught by the, the older, older women. Like yeah, mm -hmm. grandma didn't play that, right. The, right. Old, the older women. Right. Right. <laughs> I but it does. Yeah. So, and it's so funny. We talk about it all the time. Me and my wife, we talk about it in our church. Like, we're the older people now. Y'all And so, <laughs> but we are. We're the older people now. But, and it has to be taught because this new generation, they don't know. So the bar has to be high. But not so high until now you're more concerned about the way folks are looking instead of the way folks are acting. Right. And that's the issue. You know, we, right. they didn't took holiness to the place to where now it's all about the outward appearance right. instead of dealing with what's going on inside of folks, you know. So sometimes women like to live vicariously through their daughters. A lot of time, like you were saying yeah. originally, with this comment, while others like to compete for the attention that their daughters are getting. So mm -hmm. that's an issue, too. That's yeah. why a man is supposed to step in and secure his wife so that she doesn't have those issues. But women have to mature to the place where they're not jealous or intimidated by the younger women. Right. They must remain in a good place to teach Amen. and train them up without selfish motives. Mm -hmm. That's sound doctrine according to Titus 2 and 3. Well, even with today's trends, and I find for myself, things have gotten tighter and shorter. So you have to work a little harder to try to find something. But I feel like the ultimate goal is we still have to dress modestly. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But but even then, there is no there's no like church uniform. Yeah. You know, there's not a, a church section in, in department stores where, oh, God, that's what we supposed to. You know what right. I mean? Right. Um, so it, it's up to the older women to teach the modesty. That, that, that's what we've been discussing for the last couple of minutes or so to the younger women. Uh, and then men, they also need to be taught as well by the older men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pull your pants up, son. Mm -hmm. Remove your hat when you're inside of a building, son. 
You know what I mean? Uh, uh, your, 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 your suit jacket is supposed to be arm length. When you raise it's all types of things I remember coming up that my father or my uncles or my grandfather would give me um, that have to be taught by older men. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, these people, you know, our, our kids. And that's what this is, this is about, the generation that's coming up behind us um, and what, what other generations did for me. So Proverbs 22 and 6 says, again, train up a child on where they should go. And when, they, and when the child gets old, he will not depart from it. So a lot of the things I recall, even in, I guess, uh, as you grow up and you see some things that may influence you um, just out and about or whatever the case may be, whatever you've been taught or whatever, the, whatever way you've been trained, it'll kick in mm -hmm. right at the right time and right at the right moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yes, we, uh, we need our older generations to step in. Exactly. And some things are not appropriate for Christians, period just because they cause a stumbling block, yes. you know, and, that, and, and, and occasion to tempt others. Mm -hmm. So that's what we don't want to do. Right. We don't want to be guilty <clears throat> of that. We must be careful not to intentionally seduce people and lead them astray by our selections right. for when we're dressing. You right. know that when you're buying it. Yeah. Like you try it on and be like, ah, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> you know, then, then you need to put it up. Exactly. Because now you, you know, now yeah, you, yeah. you're trying to be a stumbling block. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, Romans 14 and 13, let, uh, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in mm -hmm. his brother's way. So we right. don't want to be guilty of that. We want to make sure, and it takes the older, more mature people sometimes to pull us to the side and say, hey, that's a little inappropriate. You shouldn't wear that kind of a little too little tight or you need to put something under that right. you know what i'm saying those those kind of things and and if it's done uh in order and it's done the right way with a with a loving heart people will receive it right, right. We, we don't have folks fighting <clears throat> at our church because they want to wear a certain thing right and we do have people my wife and we pull people to the side and say hey you know probably don't need to wear that no more it's time to give that to your infant yeah. You know, or something. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to pull people to the side and tell them that. And they're like, oh, really? Is it like that or whatever? Say, so, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll get it. You right. Know? And right. that's the way to do it. Uh, and that's becoming holiness and sound doctrine. OK, so what about this? And I'm going to use my, myself as an example. So what about if I, my hair is holy, I got a nice bun. <laughs> I got the covered shirt. My sleeves are to here. I got the A-line skirt. It's to the floor. I'm dressed holy. I'm completely holy, but my actions are ungodly. Mm -mm. Yeah, but I mean, so have I missed the point altogether? Yeah, I mean, but what good is it to to look the part and not live it? It doesn't make sense. And why is looking the part so much more important than living the part? Because I'm not leading nobody astray. <laughs> but but now you, I cussed them out. you you leading yourself astray. <laughs> I cuss them out, but I mean, I'm we, not leading. But them we read the scripture earlier. You're deceiving yourself. Uh, I mean, the Bible says that, yeah. right? Second mm -hmm. Timothy three and five says, "Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away." So I'm, I got to turn away from you. I mean, if you're really that person or the example of that person, I, being who God truly wants you to be is much more important than who you want people to believe you are. Mm -hmm. And it's a society issue right now, and I believe that's why we're talking about it, because the church needs to step up and, and make sure that our, our young people and us, you know, and we need to have that identity in Christ so we don't start doing those things to draw people or, or for people to give us some type of false validation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen a lot of this, and I'm going to close with this, um, and hopefully we answered all your questions. If you got a question about what we're talking about, of course, we're going to deal with all of the questions in uh, our next episode. But... Um, I've seen a lot of this holiness churches full of holy dresses and homosexuals. Uh, that just baffles my mind. And I asked God about it many years ago. And that's when God really shared with me that all of the Pentecostal denominations will one day be, hit, be, be led by a homosexual. All of them. Wow. And God showed me this a long time ago. 20 years ago it had to be. My wife probably remembers 20 years, 25 years ago maybe. That God showed me that because that always, I always wondered why are they attracted to the shouting and the dancing and the music and the organ. And the, I mean, what is the attraction there? Yeah. And usually there, the women <clears throat> are portrayed as unattractive and the men are portrayed as attractive. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's like the women can't wear makeup, but the homosexuals can sing, mime, mm. shout act a fool without anyone challenging them. The musicians can play in the clubs and play secular music on the weekends, 
The choir members can all sleep with each other and be led by a homosexual choir director. There can be more divorces than weddings. Wow. More abortions than childbirths. <clears throat> more folks leaving than joining, and yet they keep the women in dresses with no makeup. Is that really important? Is that what you deem holiness is? Um, holiness is God's way, which means we should be trying to live up to it. Not on the outside, but inwardly. Amen. People worry about the outer appearance and focus harshly on the way people dress to deflect the real issue. You see, anyone can dress the part and appear righteous, but who can love their husband and wife enough to stay with them? Who can love the young boys enough to sit them down and teach them how to not be effeminate? Who can love that musician, that organist enough to make him get a real job so he can have a retirement and a future after the younger musician comes and takes his job? Talk about it. Who can love the members enough to tell them that daycare is dangerous and leaving kids with family is not God's desire, but the woman should be home with her kids during the their developmental stages. Holiness is doing things right so that we can get the right results. Right. That's holiness. Quit yes. calling it a denomination. Quit saying it's the Pentecost. We, we, we holiness. Holiness is doing things right so that we can get the right results. We can't keep creating problems for God to fix and call this holiness. We have to live his way and follow his plan in order to exhibit his true holiness. Matthew 23 and 23 is talking to the holy scribes and the holy Pharisees who claim to be the holiness of God. Jesus says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done and not to leave the other undone. Matthew 23 and 24, ye blind guides which strain out a gnat and swallow a camel, meaning you're looking at the little things that aren't even that important while you're taking in the big things that are destroying the church. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So the outside ain't clean unless the inside is clean. Yeah. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sculptures, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity.